Today I've got a problem from Cambridge University's entrance exam step. This is in fact from step one, which they've now discontinued, uh, but it's the easiest of the three step exams. And so this is what I use with my students when they're just getting started with preparing for step one. Start them with step one, then slowly move to step two, and then step three. Let's have a look at this one. We've got constants a1, a2, u1, and u2, which we want to find, such that whenever p is a cubic polynomial, the integral from minus one to one of p of t dt equals a1 times p of u1 plus a2 times p of u2. Do have a go at this problem, but I'm going to dive straight in. Let's just take an arbitrary cubic p, so p of t, and let's call it alpha t cubed plus beta t squared plus gamma t plus delta. Now, what do we want? We want that no matter the choice of alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, such that when I substitute that into this left-hand side, it equals this right-hand side, where all I need are these constants a1, u1, a2, and u2. So the most intuitive thing to do is, well, I'll just sub this into the left-hand side. So the integral from minus 1 to 1 of p of t dt. And now you can do this yourself, but notice that alpha t cubed and gamma t, those are both odd functions. So when I sketch them, um, they're symmetric around the origin, or they're rotationally symmetric uh, by 180 degrees about the origin. So, for example, t cubed looks like this. Not drawn perfectly, um, but it looks something like that. And so when I integrate from 1 to minus 1, this negative area is the same as that area, and so they cancel out. So, in fact, I'm just left with the even terms, beta and delta. And if you work this out, this gives me 2 beta over 3 plus 2 delta. Okay, great. So what I need to do is find constants a1, a2, and u1, u2, such that whenever I substitute u1 and u2 into this equation here, and then multiply them correspondingly by a1 and a2 and add them up, I always get 2 beta over 3 and 2 delta. So the first thing that strikes out to me is, that, well, I want these alpha and gamma terms to kind of cancel out. And I notice that both of those are odd. So maybe the t value or the u1 or u2 I should plug in, I should have u1 equals minus u2. So that one is the negative of the other, because then when I substitute them in and add them up, provided, of course, a1 and a2 are the same, these terms will cancel out with each other. And then, OK, so if I do that, then what I need is I need a1 times beta times u1 squared plus a1 times beta times u1 squared to equal 2 beta over 3. So this just comes from looking at what I get when I substitute u1 into this and when I substitute u2 into this as well. And now how can we get this? Well, if I just make out a1 equal to 1 and if I make u1 equal to 1 over the square root of 3, this will work. So that's what I'm going to choose for a1. u1 is going to be 1 over root 3 and then a2 has to be 1 and u2 has to be the negative of this. So let me just quickly go over that again. Um, we've evaluated the integral on the left side, and it's 2 beta over 3 plus 2 delta. And we need that we need to choose these numbers u1 and u2 such that when I add up, you know, a1 pu1 plus a2 pu2, the alpha and gamma terms cancel, and I'm just left with beta and delta terms. Um, notice that when I add the two terms up, I'm going to get 2 delta anyway. So that bit's fine. So I really just need to focus on the 2 beta over 3. And I've just found a way that that can work is if I have a1 and a2 both being equal to 1, and u1 and u2 being 1 over root 3 and minus 1 over root 3. And so therefore, the integral from minus 1 to 1 of p of t dt will always equal um, 1 times p of 1 over root 3 plus 1 times p of minus 1 over root 3, like so.